Hi again. One of the interesting features of Neo4j Bloom is the ability to save a Cypher query as a search phrase that can be used over and over. To take a look at how that's done, we go over to the perspective definition into the search tab. And here you can see some pre-created search phrases, we call them. Uh, and if you click on any one of them, this is a static search phrase, which, is a, which has a static Cypher query. And it's basically designed to always return high-risk individuals based on a certain threshold. Similarly, we have other search phrases. This one says fraud rings with greater than X number of members or greater than dollar members members. The dollar members here, uh, here denotes a parameter that can then be satisfied by the user. So the, the query is not as static as the previous one, but the user can actually change the query based on the parameter they want to enter. In this case, they have a choice between two and 10. Uh, another example is of a search phrase where you actually have two parameters, purchases from uh, a shop on a specific date, and the user can actually choose from a list of shop names and purchase dates that are available from the data. So let's take uh, a look at some of these queries in action. So the first one we looked at was high-risk individuals. Essentially, all I need to do is go in and type in high. And as you can see already, the suggestion list populates with the search phrase because Bloom already knows about this. And as soon as I do that, uh, I'm able to now get back all of the high risk individuals based on that particular query. This data might change time over time, depending on how the data is changing on, on, in the underlying database. And then I can go about and, and explore the result set as I may choose to. Let me clear this one and let's go to the second one, which was the fraud rings example. So here, this might be a little bit more interesting where I'm, inter I'm interested in uh, fraud rings where there are more than three members, let's say. And in this case, you can see there are a bunch of different options available to me, two, three, four, five. I can even actually put in six or seven um, if I want. Let me go with three. And here, again, you see a bunch of uh, account holders. In fact, I can go ahead and expand this list. And here you can start visualizing these fraud ranks with uh, five members in this case, all these nodes in red, uh, actually six, four in this case, four in this case, and so on. Let me clear this one one more time. And let's take a look at one of the purchase uh, and there are two of them. So uh, you can see purchases by or purchases from. Let's try this one first. So in this one, I'm interested in purchases by an individual. So there, there may be many individuals uh, in this data set. So to uh, give a more specific public search, I'm entering in a couple of initials, uh, initial letters of the, of the individual's name. In this case, I'm interested in Sandy and there we go. We can see the purchases made by Sandy in this, in this data set. There's only one, but maybe I'm interested in based on this query, uh, what's going on with this particular store or shop. And here I can use this other one. And I'm looking at purchases from, I believe it's uh, pronounced as message Kovic and sons on a specific date. Let's pick the same date as uh, what's over here, 2018-0126, and there we go. Now we can start correlating or relating, connecting uh, these different purchases made by different individuals on the same day from the same store. So this was an example of how you could use search phrases in Neo4j Bloom. And essentially the different use cases might be um, an end user doesn't want to type in Cypher or doesn't know Cypher. Uh, somebody can prepare these search phrases for that person. Or if you, even if you know Cypher, you want to be able to repeat the, the queries over and over and parameterize them. So those kinds of use cases make these search phrases really useful.